Good evening, everybody. How are you tonight? Awesome, full of glory, power. Hasn't this, this, been, this has just been so wonderful. It's like heaven on earth, right? Why don't we uh, grab a seat tonight? <laughs> yeah, grab a seat. And uh, let's stand up, grab the hand of somebody next to you. Tell them how beautiful they are, how great it is to be with, with them tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Give somebody a big high five. If you don't know, you give them a hug if you know them. High five if you don't. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right, are we ready to pray? <clears throat> Come in. Agreement is a powerful thing, isn't it? Hey, we welcome you on uh, live stream tonight. We welcome you to join in with us as we worship. Steve Swanson has just been amazing as usual. Thank you, Steve. So, Father, we're just here tonight for you. We welcome you with praise tonight. We welcome you with honor. We welcome you with glory. We welcome you, Lord, with all our hearts tonight, all our hearts. God, we just thank you for revelation flowing tonight, for impartation flowing tonight. We thank you for your beautiful presence that's been with us all through this week. We just bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Father, we just welcome that angelic realm into the room tonight. And we just say go to the angels that are on assignment in this house tonight. We ask you and receive from you tonight, Father, that spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. We thank you, Father, for uh, joining, that heaven is joining with us tonight. And God, we just say on earth as it is in heaven in this place tonight, we come into agreement with heaven. God, we thank you that you're revealing your heart to us. And Lord, we just ask you, show us your world tonight. Show us, uh, let us see what it is that you want us to see tonight. Our hearts and our spirits are open. We engage with you tonight, Father. And we declare in this house that God is good and his mercy endures forever. We just say God is good and his mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to encourage you to come in the spacious and luxurious altar area. We're going to press in tonight. We're going to see what God... There they are. Come on, they're ready. <laughs> sure. So lift up your hands, oh you gates. And be lifted up, you ancient doors. So lift up your hands, oh you gates, and be lifted up, you ancient doors. Yeah. And the King of Glory, and the King of Glory, and the King of Glory shall come in. Something right at the beginning here. Let's just all begin to pray and sing in the, in the spirit, sing in tongues. Come on, we're just gonna open it up. We're gonna open it up. Open up your spirit. Yeah, come on. Settle in, get engaged. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm a kid in I just heard it. So lift up your hands, all you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors. So lift up your hands, you, all you gates. And be lifted up, you ancient doors. glory the king of glory shall come in come on we 
and by you, King of glory. <laughs> Woo! So we lift our heads up.
second here. Well, I replug this back in. Come on, you know what we're going to ask for tonight? We're going to ask for a release of our inheritance. Sounds good? It's part of the harvest. It's part of our promise. What do they say? Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth. So right now we're just going to pull on heaven and receive our inheritance. as our inheritance it's not a problem it's a promise <laughs> we ask for the uttermost parts of the earth Lord. release our inheritance release our inheritance for your glory for your glory
but one God. His name is Jesus, one with the Father, one with the Spirit. Come on, so lift your hands up. Open the ancient doors, prepare the way for the glory of our Lord. Hallelujah! Sing us with me. A blessing and honor and glory and power. A blessing. Blessing and honor and glory and power forever. Sing it again. A blessing and honor and glory and power. A blessing and honor and glory and power. A blessing and honor and glory and power forever. Give it to the drum.
even in a rage. They prepare for war. Don't you know that the fight is in the heavens and the battle belongs to the Lord? He sits and laughs at all your plans. You're dealing with the great I am. So we say to you, you'll see the truth and then you'll know and understand there is only one king on the throne there is only one king on the throne come on there is only one king on the throne there is only one king on the throne there is only one king on the throne hey there is only one Come on, lift your hands up. Come on, lift your heads up. Wow! Oh, yes. Awakening and harvest. It's more than cities, it's nations. God is calling it to the nations with the love. He said if he'd be lifted up, he'd draw all men unto him. So here in this place tonight, in this little corner of the world, Lord, we lift you up tonight. We lift you up tonight. We lift you up tonight. We sing praises to your Praises to your name, the name that's so much higher than all names. We give honor to your name. All of our to your name, the name that's so much greater than all names. Come on, sing it with us. Be lifted up. So be lifted up. to your name.
Your name is life. Your name is hope inside. Hope inside. Your name is love. up your name Jesus we lift up your name oh Lord yes over all the earth oh mm, yeah oh lift him up lift him up lift him up yeah we lift your name up Lord Lift up your name, oh God, yeah, yeah. Lord, we say be lifted up, Lord, be lifted, be lifted, be lifted higher, 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 Lord. Your name is exalted above all of the earth. Your name is exalted over all the earth. Oh, and every knee will bow, and every tongue confess. Every tongue confess, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Yeah, we lift you up, Lord. We lift you higher and 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 higher. And higher.
Put a little soul in it. Come on. Jesus. 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 The name above all me. Oh, yeah.
me pub on me Sounds much better. Come on, we can clap. Jesus. Uh-uh. Jesus. 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 Name above all me. Jesus, the name above all names, a little bit louder. Jesus, 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 the name above. A little bit louder now, a little bit louder, Jesus. Holy Spirit's gonna fall right now. Fall right now, Holy Spirit. There he is, yes. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, fall on us. Come, sweet presence, fill us.
against those ministers of flame. Release the angels. Release the angels. Release the angels. Ministers of flame. Ministers. Always hears my cry 
won't it be in the middle of the wheel? Wherever the Spirit goes, wherever the Spirit goes, wherever the Spirit goes, wherever the Spirit goes. Four living creatures, everyone crying, holy, holy, twenty four elders, four living creatures, everyone crying, twenty four elders, four living creatures, everyone crying, twenty four elders, four living creatures, everyone. Heard a loud voice proclaiming in heaven. Who is worthy to take the book, to loose the seals? Who is worthy to take the scroll and loose the seals? And no one in heaven, and no one on was found worthy No one in heaven and no one on the earth was found worthy Take the book Loose the seals Release the mysteries of the Father's will And I began to weep Began to weep because no one was found worth. I began to weep because no one was found worth to take the book and loose the seal to release the mysteries from the Father's will. Father's and then one of the elders said to me, don't cry, don't weep, don't cry, don't, don't cry, don't weep, cause the light of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. Yeah, the line of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. <laughs> the line of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. To open the book, to loose the seals, release the mysteries of the Father's will. And then suddenly I heard a rumble. Coming from Newcastle, Washington, suddenly I heard a rumble that spread all up and down the West Coast. And rumbling, 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 a holy roar rising up from the ground. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain.
Turn it up, turn it up, turn it up. Check, check, check. Turn it up, turn it up. So when you shout, great big God. Great big God. He's a great big God. He's a great big God. Come on, come on, come on. Man, aren't you excited to serve a God who's alive? A God who's alive and well and moving on the earth. Look at the person next to you and say, God's moving on the earth. And you get to be a part. 
man, I love at the beginning of uh, 2016, God began to move in uh, San Diego with Jeremy Nelson and Joshua Mills. And, and, and Joshua released this word. He said, if you want to be a part of what God is doing on the earth, all you have to say is yes. yes. And when I heard that, I was, I was watching it on my phone on Periscope. And I was in my car and I, and I, and I, and I shouted, yes, 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 five times. Because there's something, there's something about me that like I just was not created for religion. Like, I was just not created for tradition. Like, I was created by God to be a part of a movement. To be a part of a company of people who are running with the things of God on the earth. And how many of you, that, that's you. Like, you weren't created to be traditional or, or to be religious. Or... How many, like, like, it's been the cry of your heart to be a part, a significant part of what God is doing on the earth. And some of you don't even know what that looks like. I mean, honestly, I don't even know if I, I don't even think I know what it looks like. But all I know is that, uh, is that I'm available. I'm available. And, and, he, and he may be moving here or he may be moving there, but, but I'm going to find out where he's moving and I'm going to throw myself into it. I'm going to sow into it. I'm going to give into it. And I got good news. We're not waiting for a someday. We're not waiting for Holy Spirit to come. Man, the Holy Spirit was released on the earth, what, 2,000 years ago. And he never clocked out and said, well, I'm done with this place. It's no longer about the someday. It's about the suddenlings. And how many of you, you came here tonight, not to hear about what's coming, but you came here tonight to have a suddenly encounter with God. Come on. Man, there's something about expectation. There's something about hunger that's irresistible to the Lord. How many of you, you're just hungry tonight? Like you're, man, I, Charlie Shamps in the house tonight. And Charlie said to me, he goes, he goes, dude, I'm just hungry. And I said, me too, dude. Dude. Bro. Dude. 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 And you know what that means? That means that Charlie Shamp and I are irresistible to the Lord. Because we, we hungry... And we ain't going to replace Holy Spirit for anything else. Nothing else. Nothing else will do it. Man, I don't, want, I don't want a model. I don't want some curriculum. I don't want some new style. I just want him. I just want him. I just want him. I just want him. I just want to be a part of what he's, what he's doing. It's stuff. Yeah? It's stuff. So, man, I just tell you that. This week has been so fulfilling for me. Just, just Sunday night with Andre Ashby and Jeremy Nelson. And in the last 24 hours, Che on. And just the worship and just the atmosphere that we've been creating here. It's just been so fulfilling for me. Just, just, enjoying, the, just enjoying the presence of the Lord with all y'all. Just like, we haven't really, I don't know if you noticed, and maybe this has annoyed you, but we haven't really set any sort of time limits on anything. Like, Steve was like, during, during the days, he's like, how long do you want worship to go? We said, J dude, just go. Dude. <laughs> Bro. Man, I'm sensing a theme tonight. It's the dude anointing. <laughs> dude! <laughs> Anyways, we're going to have some fun tonight. Man, Jesus is here tonight. Steve Swanson's here tonight. Charles here. And Mahesh Shabda is in the house tonight. So good to have you. Come on. Come on. And look at the person next to you. And you're in the house tonight. In the words of Bobby Connor, well, well. in that song. <laughs> <laughs> 
we're going to take, we're going to take an offering. And, well, we're not going to do that. We're going to receive an offering. That's better. And, uh, and, and in order to do that, we're actually going to have Charlie Shamp receive the offering tonight. So would you welcome tonight our friend, a friend of this house, Charlie Shamp. Come on. Come on. Dude. Dude. Wow, you guys look awesome. Hallelujah. I couldn't wait to get here. I flew, I flew all the way from India. Hallelujah. So, it's wonderful to be with you guys. Uh, I want to show you something very quickly as we're going to receive the offering tonight. Uh, out of Genesis chapter 8. If you have a Bible, just flip there real quick. I, I want to put your eyes on this scripture. If you're watching online tonight, you can give online. Just get in on this offering. But Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, the Bible says, While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest. Look at your neighbor say, seed time and harvest. In, in 1953, there was a man by the name of Oral Roberts. How many have ever heard of Oral Roberts before? And around... 4.30 in the morning, uh, a man came knocking at his, at his front door. Uh, or was a, uh, a pastor in a church in the middle of cornfields, and this farmer comes knocking at his door at 4 in the morning, and he has a box in his hand, um, a shoe box, and says to Oral, he says, he says, I came to give you something. And he opened up the box, and there was money inside of it, and he said, I want you to have this. He said, this is seed. He said, I'm a farmer and I understand how to sow seed and I need a breakthrough in my, this year our farm is going to go under unless we sow. So I recognize that there are seeds and I'm taking this money and I'm going to sow it as a seed. And that's how Or Roberts received a revelation out of Genesis chapter 8 verse 22. And he said that the Lord had showed him that seed time and harvest and there would be a reaping if there was a sowing amen, amen. you're quiet in here right now say amen. amen I started I started meditating on this scripture many years ago and uh, seed time and harvest I said Lord I said every generation there's an increase shout increase the revelation is progressive meaning that every generation gets to step into another dimension hallelujah and if Oral Roberts understood the anointing, this generation is beginning to understand the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, son, I want to teach you how to sow not just into the anointing, but into the glory. Amen. Mm, you're quiet in here. Anyways. He said, I want you to look at that scripture again. And, and I looked at it and I said, while the earth remains seed time and harvest. He said, son, do you want to know how to sow into the glory? I said, I said, yes, Lord. He said, take time out. So that it becomes seed harvest. Seed harvest. Because the, in the glory, there is no time. There is only eternity. And so when you sow into an eternal realm, God takes out time. And even as you begin to sow the seed tonight, I believe that God is going to cause you to reap. I recognize that there is a general of the glory in this house tonight. And if anyone understands the realms and the dimensions of glory, it's Mahesh Shabda. There is a legacy within this man that we're going to receive tonight from those like Ruth Ward Heflin, those, those like Derek Prince. There is generational glory that's here tonight that we can receive from. And um, it's just a real privilege and an honor to be able to receive this offering. But I want you to get ready because we're not just going to sow into an anointing. We're going to sow into the glory of God tonight. And I believe that as we sow into the glory, there isn't going to be this gap of time 
where you begin to reap in different areas of your life. Amen? There is an anointing, but then there is a glory. And there is a glory even upon a man's ministry that you can sow into. And when you sow into that, you reap out of that. Hallelujah. So if you're making a check tonight, you can make out to SRC. But get a seed in your hand tonight. Be intentional about what you're giving. Be intentional about sowing into the presence of God tonight. When you're ready, I want you just to hold up your seed. Get it. Just lift it up. lift your seat and just wave it tonight just Father I thank you for every seed that's sown tonight Lord Father I ask you for supernatural and financial glory miracles economic miraculous money miracles Father we thank you that there's seed time and harvest, but when we sow into the glory, you cancel out time. And tonight, Father, I'm asking you for time-traveling miracles with our finances. Supernatural debt cancellations in the name of Jesus. Father, take us back in time before the, we accumulated that debt. By releasing this seed tonight, let, let there be exponential financial miracles. Father, we thank you for it. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. If you're ready to give, come and give us some joy. I mean, you might, you might actually put a seed in the bucket and fall out as you come. Yeah. Got joy like a fountain, joy like a fountain, a joy like a fountain in my soul. I've got joy. Shout all up in here. Lift up the name of Jesus. All the, would all the pastors in the, his house stand up tonight? All, all the pastors in the house tonight, just stand, stand up to your feet. Let's welcome all these amazing generals in the, in the region. Andy Casper, all the way from Lorton, Virginia. Come on. Pastor Keith Kippen, all the way from Jake's house. Come on now. Nathan French, all the way from the Rock Church. 
Mike DiLorenzo's in the house tonight. And honey, what? And then you, God bless you. I don't know if we've met yet, but God bless you. You're here tonight, so we bless you. Now, all, pa Pastor Greg's in the house tonight. And Greg, Greg is hosting. We don't have the banner to put up, but, but Greg is the apostolic overseer over International Fellowship of Ministries. And they're hosting their annual conference here this year in September. And Chris Overstreet's going to be in the house. So that's coming up. That's, that's coming up. And, and, I, and we'll, we'll get information on our Facebook page on that. I don't know if we, if we have much up on that. We're also excited to announce. Ed, do you got that graphic to put up of what we got coming up in September? I'm personally really excited about what we got coming up. And this is the apple of his eye gathering. It's, this is a save the date, September 22nd to the 24th. It's with Justin Abraham. John Scotland and Godfrey Bertil. If you've ever been at a fire tunnel here at Seattle Revival Center and you've ever heard that song, well, are you ready, ready, ready? A ring, a ding, a ding, a ding. All right, so that's Godfrey. And he's my second favorite worship leader after Steve Swanson. Come on now. <laughs> this dude, yeah, come on, come on. So you're gonna want you're gonna want to check that out. That's Dude. gonna be that's gonna be a lot of fun. So tomorrow morning we have a special special guest that's gonna be bringing it. Uh, Darren Stott's gonna be here tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. And then we're uh, and, I, and then I'm I'm excited because tomorrow night Mahesh is staying here for an extra night. So Mahesh is gonna be back tomorrow night. And tomorrow tomorrow's gonna be a a, a healing service. We're doing a healing service tonight. Mesh is doing a healing service tonight. And tomorrow night, you're going to want to come back. Bring all your friends because tomorrow night's going to be an impartation, an impartation service with Mahesh Shopton. So that, that's going to be, that's going to be incredible. And then Miranda Nelson's coming in with her interns on Friday night, Saturday morning. And then Charlie Shamp's going to be closing the week out Saturday night, Saturday night and Sunday Sunday morning. So you still, we still got a lot of week left, and I tell you that uh, up to this point, it's, oh, what's up, what's up? <laughs> I feel like we're on this cruise, man. It's like, <laughs> dude. And you're like the cruise director. Yeah, it's dude. Like, it's like, like, this is like a glory, a lot more. this is like a glory this. cruise without, without, without the snorkeling and skeet shooting. Oh, we're snorkeling all right. Yeah, yeah. We're going deep. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll do this conference next year on a cruise, Steve. Yeah. A whole week on a cruise. At least you and I will be on a cruise. Yes. I, don't, I don't know what else. Sure. I'm, I'm excited about tonight. Um, I, I, I have wanted for Mahesh Shabda to be able to come uh, here to Seattle Revival Center for, for gosh, for years. And, um, and, and Jeanette's got some logistics that you want to do. Okay. All right. Awesome. And we're, then we're going to set some stuff up. All right. Awesome. You got a plan. Would you welcome Jeanette tonight? Okay, we're going to do a little rearranging of the house. And I want to just give you a heads up on a couple things. First off, I have three um, cars that are parked in a place that needs, need to be moved. And so if I, um, let me tell you those first. It's a Dodge Caravan, AYT is what it starts with. There's a... Um, Subaru Outback and a Ford Fusion. So if you, those are one of yours. If you would just go outside, Pastor Keith's waiting for you. <laughs> oh, he'll be nice. Go ahead. Go on out. Um, and then, so here, here's what I want to explain. I mean, we, we, are, we literally have um, an awesome opportunity tonight to receive in a realm of glory that... Um, that we don't often experience. So we are going to honor the presence of the Lord tonight by having um, a system so every single person has hands laid on them, okay? And, here's, and I want to give you a heads up because when ministry time comes, this is how we're going to do it. Pastor Mahesh, when he's ready to start ministering, we, we will help him move down here and he'll be sitting down here on the floor. And then we're going to release a section at a time to come around and come by and get prayer. 
Okay, so um, what we're asking is that you wait until your section or your row um, has an angel, or we call them ushers, <laughs> um, and they will re they will release your row, and they'll and they'll, it'll be nice and orderly. And and the reason for the order is for to, just to honor the presence of the Lord and the atmosphere in the room. Okay, so so while you're waiting, just stay in an atmosphere of praise. There's uh, and and. And stay in a place of rest. If not into conversation, but and if you really have to have conversation, um, it would be good to go out into the, the cafe area. And the thing, and so as you come by, you feel free to. Um, you'll get a little assistance if you need it <laughs> by, our, by our great cool catchers. But you can feel free to go back to your seat, or you can sit somewhere else and just remain in and receive fully what God has given you. Okay. So uh, how does that sound? Are we good with that? Okay, great. So God bless you guys. So good, Jeanette. Jeanette, I just love who you are, and I love how you function. Yes, yeah, so good, so good. I want to say thank you, Jeanette. All right, come on. So like I, like I, was, like I was saying, um, yeah, th this, is like, this is like a dream come true. My, uh, my dad, he uh, passed away um, ab about a year ago. Um, July of last year, and uh, one of the things that my dad really walked in was was just a love and honor for the glory of the Lord. Um, right at the very beginning of '94, when the Lord started to move here, uh, my dad would uh, one particular night he began to get really, really drunk and uh, and couldn't couldn't function, and he just began to just buzz in the in the in the presence of the Lord. And um, and then uh, I remember asking him, Dad, what's going on? Because it was different. And he said, I'm, I'm watching the lightnings of God, except for he couldn't say it. He was like. He, he would tell me, whoa, yeah, he would tell me later that he was, that he was watching the lightnings of God. For my dad, it, it became this very intimate kind of friendship between him and, 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 and the Lord. And, and the glory of the Lord became, became this thing that, 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 that began to remind my dad of that relationship uh, with the Lord. But I, I remember my dad would just, was always talking about the glory. And, and his very first email that he ever set up was glorywalk1 at AOL.com. Because he just, I mean, it was all for my dad. It was about walking the glory. But my dad would always tell me, he would always say, Mahesh Shavda, he is... He is like, he, he's been walking in the glory for years. And my dad always had such an honor um, for Mahesh Shavda. And, and uh, Bobby, um, Bobby Connor um, has come through this church every year uh, since I've been the pastor. And so Bobby's like a dear, uh, a dear friend of this house. And, and so whenever Bobby would come through, he'd always tell uh, Mahesh stories. And so I, I just always remember thinking like, man, it was so cool if Mahesh, if Mahesh would come. And then um, uh, over this last year and a half, we've, we've had the honor of uh, having Bonnie Shavda come through um, twice. And let me just say, like, uh, Bonnie, Bonnie Shavda is one of my favorite preachers, uh, period. Like, that, that girl can, can out-preach just, uh, just about anyone. Like, literally, she's one of the best preachers. Um, th that I've ever heard. I mean, she's she, uh, like she's like the she's like the spur like the current present day Spurgeon of the of the of the Pentecostal stream. If you're tracking, and so it's been such an honor having Bonnie here and just falling in love with who she is. And I just feel like it's such an honor to have one of the original Glory Gangsters um, in the in, in, in the house tonight. And so Mahesh, we just we just I, I mean, say that respectfully, of course, and and we just so love you and we so honor you. And like I said, this is the dream come true. Tonight. We just want you to have just just do whatever you want to do. We receive you for for who you are, and so would you uh, join me in welcoming the Shavs tonight? Standing. Am I on? Can you hear me? Testing, testing. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, all right. Stand up again. <laughs> Raise your hands. Father, we glorify you. Jesus, we bow before you. You are. Right now, 
and from everlasting to everlasting. You are awesome, God. We are beholding you. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. There's no one like you, Jesus. No one like you. We honor you. We worship you. King of glory, come in. You're awesome in this place, yes. Lord. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Golden glory is coming here. I think someone, a couple of you are getting it's a gold filling or gold crown right now. That's never happened before for me that in the beginning of the, in the prayer, the Lord, I see the glory coming down. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We worship you. Lamb of God, thou art worthy to receive our praise, our thanksgiving, our honor. Riches and honor and blessing and glory belong to you. Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be glorified. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I just see the swirls of the cloud of the glory of God over us right now. Thank you, Father. Come, Holy Spirit. Jesus' name. Praise you, Lord. Now give him a big clap offering. Thank you, Father. Praise you, Lamb of God. Glory. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. You can hear me, right? That's sometimes I get. <laughs> this is beautiful. Steve, it's great to see you in action once again. I get another dose of Steve Swanson. He was with us two weeks ago back our place in Charlotte. And he got on his horse and rode all the way here. It took him two weeks. <laughs> with the glory caboose. I see you brought the instruments here. That's awesome. Awesome. And it is so good to be with the Seattle Revival Center and Darren and Andrea, we bless you. Uh, I'll tell you, Bonnie fell in love with you guys. And she said so many awesome things. I said, well, I got to come here. <laughs> She is, she fell in love with Darren. She said, you got to meet him. He is, I mean, see, he reminds me of you 45 years ago. <laughs> she loved your humor and the style here of just freedom. There are not that many places. Uh, but as I landed here, I saw just uh, felt like that's directional from here that this is one of the key places where a mighty river of fresh wine and oil is going to pour out over the northeast and over the it's going to start covering the USA from this side on down and there is something else coming up from San Diego but it's going to meet but uh it's a different flavor wine. I couldn't discern what, but it was like the wine is a little different from what you had. There was an amazing outpouring uh, 45 years ago or so here in this region. And, but there is a wave that's a fresh wave that's loose. And you guys are some of the stewards of that outpouring on the nation. So I bless you, each one of you and the leadership here at uh, Seattle Revival Center. There's something unique of the oil and the wine coming forth. And a great stream. The rivers out of you shall flow rivers of living water. So out of each of you, and then all that you influence, there is a mighty 
river that's coming forth. And the power is from the river. The life is from the river. You are just, we are just emissaries. And the more we set aside and observe what the Lord does, it has, uh, that's the good news. That it has very little to do with me or with you. It has everything to do with the glory and the presence of God. How many of you would like to be emissaries and ambassadors of the glory? May the Lord make you an emissary of the glory you represent. And that is, I just want to define my terms because then I'll go forth a bit. The thick presence of the Lord, the shak used to be called in the Old Testament, the Shekinah, or they call it, some call it, the American ver- Americanized version is Shekinah. But... Uh, <laughs> The Hebrew version is Shekinah. Uh, It's the effulgence of the presence. And it comes only from God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The glory. That was essential, important for God's people. Moses insisted. Well, God gave him my, my presence will go with you. And Moses was a smart Jewish person. He said, we ain't going. If you're not going, we're not going. You come, we go. You're not coming, we stay here. (laughs) God, God's presence went with the Lord. That made all the difference. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, and from the beginning, I feel like there is a, there's a vibration here. The glory is light and sound and vibration and uh, millions of more things. But that'll, uh, you want. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's um, already flowing. I'm just going to stand aside. <laughs> but um, I, by the way, I kind of said tentatively that I would sign books tonight, but I want uh, the Lord. I felt like changed the plans and said I was supposed to lay hands tonight. So. Uh, impartation, say impartation. And uh, years ago, I may I may show you a picture of uh, this. That I, I, Bonnie and I were had the privilege of co-pastoring with Derek Prince for more than twenty two, twenty three years plus, and I got to travel with. But there, how many of you have heard of Derek Prince's? Wow, well, most of you. Well, he was perhaps the, uh, the most outstanding Bible teachers and word gifts um, 45 years ago and over. And I got to travel with him more than anybody except his wife. So, um, and you will see me, there's a picture. Just uh, My wife gave it to me. It's one of the most precious pictures I have is uh, Brother Derek and I flew to Zambia, Africa, um, 84. And I remember thousands of um, natives came. We went way into the Munalunga province, near the Zambezi River. The last major ministry had been David Livingston's. So, and... We had a healing service, and at this, by this time, he would let me say, you do the healing, sir. I'll teach, and you do. But we lay, uh, uh, he said, okay, go. And there were 5,000 
people way in the interior. There are 10,000 in the crowd, but 5,000 in the healing line. And I laid hands on everyone, but you see in the picture that Brother Derek Prince, he was standing behind me all the way through. So he had his hands on me, and I was laying hands on them. But there is an imp- there is an impartation. Years ago, he laid hands uh, on me, and it was like something happened that I woke up with a different skin. It, it was, it, that's the best way I can describe it. And uh, you, and on Brother, uh, uh, Brother Derek laid hands on Bonnie too, my wife. So, and you have seen her in action. Um, by the way, she, I, more than 41 years ago, 42 years ago, I was, uh, I was, a, a young pastor, um, single, and my name was already becoming kind of well known in around Texas and New Mexico, and we had uh, many. It was a revival, awesome revival, and uh, and Bonnie started attending our fellowship in Leveland, Texas. I remember she was from the larger city called Lubbock, Texas, if you know about West Texas. And, and when I met her, she was unique, just about 18 and a half or so. But she had met the Lord, and believe me, she was dangerous. <laughs> I mean, so on fire, so dangerous. Whoa. So I prayed for all the young people in our church. And as a pastor, I took it seriously. Um, and uh, I, was too super, I was super spiritual. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> so, and, I, and she was so on fire. I said, I got to pray whoever she marries. That young man is going to be in danger. She's going to to burn him out in two weeks. She was so, I mean, oh man, she's. And then I remember that that first Christmas while I was, as I was pastoring her, she called me. She was very serious at the time. She said, you're my pastor, so I need to call. I felt like I needed to submit this to you. The Lord's presence came into my room to my apartment and slayed me in the spirit and told me he's getting me ready to be married. And I, on the phone, I said, yes, honey, I have been praying for whoever (laughs) you did. So, so, eventually it became clear. It's too long story, so um, that the Lord was putting her, us together. So I um, kind of thought, well, in America the custom is you have to have a date. You have to start dating. And uh, so I, I called her and I said, you want to go to a movie with me? And, oh, even today, I mean, she'll give you the third degree. So she gave me, what movie? <laughs> she carried a Bible everywhere. <laughs> Couldn't separate her from a Bible. And uh, so I said, oh, it's, it's the movies about the Bible. <laughs> she said, all right. So I took her. I can remember very clearly. I took her to a movie called The Omen. (laughs) (laughs) And it 
and it, and it begins. You'll remember the old, the original omen. The first comes on and he says, and his number shall be 666. And the demon music comes on. And I said, see, it's about the Bible. I love movies, so it did. Uh, 15 minutes into the movie, she, I mean, where the demon dogs come out. Uh, she looks at me all this time. She, and she said, <laughs> Then she just simply said, Excuse me. And I thought she had to have a bathroom break. So she went, but. And. Uh, I didn't see her come back all through the movie. <laughs> now, I should have, after a while, gone out looking for her, but I, the movie was so interesting. Uh, <laughs> so when I came out, when it was over, there she was. I said, where have you been? That is the longest bathroom break. She said, I was in the bathroom reading my Bible. She had been. <laughs> so, anyway. So that, that's how it began. It was the omen. <laughs> she, should, she said, I should have realized. Anyway, no, we have a lot of fun. Um, the other thing, often, wherever I travel, when they see me, that's, they ask me often, though, especially the ladies said, your wife looks so young. What's her secret? And uh, it happened so many places. They started disturbing me a little. <laughs> she looks so young. Therefore, you look so old. But then I had a revelation. I realized all these years, when we were in bed, she would lean over and lay hands on me and shakaraba. She had a unique tongue and she would pray for me. I thought she was praying for me. She was sucking up my youth and good looks. <laughs> So gentlemen, I just want to give you a warning that when your wife lays hands in you at night or says anything and prays, be careful. You will start shriveling up. No, I'm, we have been married 41 years. It's, it's been a blessing. That's what God intends for Marriages. And how many of you are single here? Stand up for a moment. Now, as a Spiritual father and grandpa, I can send a blessing over you. And I just want to say that the Lord bless you. And when it's the right time, the divine partnerships be given. May you, may a partner be awesomely in love with Jesus and be dangerous like you. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Be seated. Thank you, Father. Now, I'm going to... Uh, read the Word of God. I'm an 
ordained Southern Baptist minister. Just want you to know. I went to a Baptist university. Four years of Baptist propaganda and brainwashing. I was so proper. They teach you to go to bed in a three-piece suit. Uh, it's a training for the ministry. I remember I used to do, uh, often do services for John Wimber. How many of you remember Brother John Wimber? The awesome spiritual father. And, uh, and I would go to California, you know, Anaheim, and uh, do his conferences. And you know, he would, few, some of you may remember John Wimber. He would come up, I mean, they, they asked him, Brother John, what, how do you prepare for the healing service? He said, I eat potato chips and watch TV. And he, he would, I would always, I would, I may not wear a tie, but I would wear this kind of outfit. And it's a mash. We love having you. But these suits, they make me nervous. They make us all nervous. They get, you get so duded up. And I'm in my jogging outfit. I said, John, you don't realize if I, if I get relaxed or if I don't give the word, Baptist spirits will come and haunt me at night. <laughs> All right, I'm going to read you. That's why I got to as a Baptist ordained minister. They have not still, I still have my ordination. Awesome. They have not heard I speak in tongues, you know. But anyway. <laughs> All right. So... I'm going to give you the couple of scriptures here. And this, is, this you can listen because it's in the Message Bible. I love some of it for devotional. And uh, it says, Colossians chapter 1, verse 15 onwards. We look at this son. So we would, as we, we honored first, let's begin our time here together. We worshiped and honored the name of the Lord. And therefore, this is, I often talk about, I love mathematics. I used to, immediately after I graduated from high school, I had such high marks in math. And I lived under the British system at the time. I was asked to teach math after just graduating from high school. Uh, So, but I'll talk about numbers and congruency. And, uh, you know, four plus one is the same as three plus two. There is congruency. The value is the same. But the equations around you change. And even tonight, as the glory, we are in the presence as we love, honor Jesus as a group together. Where two or more are gathered. He has said. There he is. In the midst of them. So he is here. But. We want to be congruent with him. And. Therefore. It's like the congruency for example. Where Mary. The angel comes to Mary. And gives her a message and she says, be it unto me according to your word. Say, be it unto me according to your word. Therefore, it's being yielded to the word and what the word brings. And the presence that's behind the word. And we agree and say yes. To God's amen. amen. And we say amen to God's yes. yes. And therefore, congruency is there. Yes. Then things start cooking. Yes. And amazing things happen. So, 
And it begins here. Say, we look at the sun. And so, I often ask you people, what are you looking at? Because whatever you're looking at is defining you. So what are you beholding tonight? We look at the sun, therefore, and see the God who cannot be seen. So you will see certain things others cannot see because you are beginning with beholding the sun. We look at the sun and see God's original purpose in everything created. So looking at the sun helps you see purpose and gives you purpose. Without Jesus then and being able to look at him, people go around purposeless. And they try to tell you what the purpose is, but they are not yet defined themselves even in the purpose because they are not looking at God. So it is important that we absolutely not get defined by people who have no place in their lives of Jesus or beholding him. They have no... So, what therefore is your purpose and therefore your destiny? It all comes from Jesus and beholding and holding on to him, focusing therefore on Jesus for everything absolutely everything above and below visible and invisible rank after rank of angels and everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him again so if we have not found him we are without purpose and therefore you are not being religious or being Intolerant by saying to a person, you desperately need Jesus. Because without Jesus, you are purposeless. Where the God's definition is concerned. I'm not disdaining anybody for where they are. God bless them. But, and our purpose is to bless them. But the highest pur- blessing you can give purpose, people is to be able to help them see Jesus. And get defined by Jesus. Amen. So everything God started in him finds its purpose in him. He was there before any of it came into existence. So why? Why should we? Because Jesus was there before anything else came into existence. And he is the one who holds it together right up to this moment. So right now. Say right now. Jesus is holding everything. Jesus is holding everything. So it's, it's like here. Uh, when it comes to the church, he organizes and holds it together like a head does a body. So he is the one, as you observe the star systems, as Captain Kirk and Mr. Spock go out there <laughs> where no one has gone before. Oh, Luke Skywalker does his thing way in that remote galaxy far, far away. Everything is being held together by Jesus. All the galaxies, all the star systems, the sun, the moon, everything. Jesus is holding it together. Now see, as therefore we are, we want to have to retrain ourselves not in religiosity, but in the glory. Because in the glory, then there is ease in the glory. And it, there is no difficulty. As you have an experience of the Holy Spirit, then you will be. There is, we just, there is no difficulty. Be it unto me according to your word, not according to anybody else's words or definitions. Jesus was supreme in the beginning. And leading the resurrection parade. He is supreme in the end. From beginning to end he's there. Towering far above 
everything and everyone. So he is the supreme one. And it is important and for you, and I'm sharing with you the, the part of the, some of the principles that will help you not only get defined by the glory and get you where you become one with it, but then you become an emissary. These are some of the, I would say, some of the beginning principles that will help assist us be the disciples that are commissioned to carry his glory across the world and across the street and in our nation and our cities. May Seattle be soaked in the glory. And wherever you go then, as an emissary of Jesus, you can claim that territory for King Jesus. Not for you, but the King of glory. One of his dangerous emissaries is there, doing signs and wonders. Turn to your neighbor and say, you are dangerous. And demons tremble. The kingdom of darkness trembles as he sees the emissaries of God. Hallelujah. That's what I call the the John Wayne anointing. Therefore, wherever you see oppression, wherever you see pain and hurt you get the John Wayne anointing remember true grit where at the end he says fill your hands you sons of guns and anyway (laughs) and then rides in with the six shooter well demons and oppressions are in trouble because people who know the glory are there And believe me, there's people who have the anointing going to place. The demons recognize. and they yes. Jesus was supreme in the beginning and leading the resurrection parade. He's supreme in the end. From beginning to end, he is there towering far above everything and everyone. So spacious is he, so roomy that everything of God finds its proper place in him without crowding. Everything find its place in him. So when people are not in Christ, then they're out of place. Not only that, but all the broken and dislocated pieces of the universe, people and things, animals and atoms get properly fixed and fit together in vibrant harmonies, all because of his death his blood that poured down from the cross. So, everything, every creature. So I've had many experiences um, in some of these areas with the Lord. Um, I remember one time many years ago in, uh, I think this was in, uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, years ago. Um, they had about, I think, 3,000 congregation, but in the healing service, then I remember laying hands on about 2,000 or so, but um, there was still 500 in line, and a lady came up, and I said, it's not for me, but can you pray for my best man, best, I mean, best friend, uh, She's dying of cancer. I said, okay, I'll be happy to pray. Um, Where is she? The way she sounded like she was in a hospital or something. She said, my best friend is outside. 
I said, what do you mean your best friend is outside? Bring her in. We can, we'll pray for her. And she said, my best friend is my dog. And, and she's, she's dying. I said, well, bring her in. So I put a stop to the whole service, waited for the dog to come in. She was a beautiful German shepherd. And cancer was, she has been told she would die soon for cancer. And she came in and when she came in, I felt like the Lord said, welcome her. She's a lady of my kingdom. I said, hello, I'm so glad you came. And she sat before me and I can read dog language. And uh, she looked at me and she said, yeah, the best looking evangelist I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly, that's how what it said. See, whoo, anyway. So I remember, I put my hands over her head. I didn't touch her because the Bible says, no, lay hands suddenly on no dog. So anyway, <laughs> well, a version of it. As I put my hand up on her, on a few inches from her head, she fell over in the anointing. No one dared to catch her. That would have been dog catchers if they had. A couple of weeks later, I got a picture, beautiful picture of her. We have her picture somewhere in our files. And they said the vet found no cancer. She had completely disappeared. Oh. I often. So, that Heather, my assistant, is here. There have been times where, and she has been there. Well, the Lord, in fact, there is someone that their dog is very sick. Where are you? Wave your hand. Because I felt like there was someone that could claim that for your dog. Wave your hand where you are. Is that what? What's the problem with that? Okay. You guys stand up right now. Just. And we'll just send the healing angel for your doggy in Jesus' name right now. What's her name? His name is Swiffer. Swiffer. Amen. We bless Swiffer. It's a he? Okay. Good. He's welcome anytime at... Seattle Revival Center. No, I'm just <laughs> there and, and, and everything. All right, thank you. You may be seated. Everything, animals, people, things get properly fixed and fit together in vibrant harmonies, all because of his death, his blood that poured down from the cross. In vibrant harmonies. Say vibrant harmonies. That's, see, the glory is singing over you tonight. And you, you pick up the vibrant harmonies. And then it goes, and everything, and the epicenter, by the way, I was going to, um, I have some of my books here, you can, I have, this is, my first book I've written about 
we have Bonnie and I together, I've written about 24, 22 books. And, uh, and, and manuals. But this is the first one. Only love can make a miracle. And uh, ladies like to read, but for the men, I put pictures in there. <laughs> but there are some. There's a picture of a death certificate of con- considered by Charisma and other ma- magazines one of the most well uh, documented resurrections of the last uh, hundred years by word of knowledge and all of that. By interest. And then there are some unique pictures. Here is when, when Derek Prince and I were in Pakistan. And uh, I was the young Jedi with Derek Prince. I would, he would tell me, go take a picture here. Say yes, sir. And uh, in uh, sitting in Faisalabad, we were preaching outside a big field, and at the edge was this woman uh, that someone had come placed her there, and she was born blind. Reason was we knew immediately because she had no eyeballs, uh, empty sockets, and and Derek said. Represented to his heart was touched as we saw her. And he said, Mash, get out of the car and take a picture of her. So I did. And that night, I, Derek, Brother Derek asked me to um, do the service. And I welcomed the Holy Spirit. And we could hear the demons start roaring and going backwards. And then a, like a thunderclap came in, like a lightning bolt. I appreciate your father talking about the lightning. It's like a lightning flash came. And we almost heard it. I mean, it was something happened. And then we saw, Beric was with me on the state sitting. And we saw the figure of a woman coming up. And we couldn't believe it. It was the same woman that I had taken a picture. Now, God, the Holy Spirit, had planted eyes where there were no eyes. I remember being with their Brother Dirk in his, the last open conference, the last conference he did in Jerusalem. I was with him, and he, he remembered and said, this was that Seeing the, uh, the Holy Spirit plant eyes was the greatest miracle he had ever seen. So nothing is impossible. Amen. Say nothing. nothing. But what I want to conclude, that, that part of the scripture here is everything is fixed and fits together in vibrant harmonies. Center of it is what? All because of his death his blood that poured down from the cross. So the central focus of the, the, all the awesome things we are talking about, the purpose, the destiny, the fixing of all the dislocated and broken pieces of the world is centered, the center of all of that is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is Calvary. It is the cross. And as we go forth, we want to know that that is the epicenter. That is the focus. Anyway, so, who doesn't have this book? Glory to God. (laughs) Hallelujah. Well, since you're on the front row, I'll give that to you. (laughs) And, by the way, we have a free gift for every one of you. Don't feel left out. Uh, at the book table, Bonnie, and I want to give you my latest prophetic message called Take the Libits Off. Because the Lord wants, there are certain things that has, things around us that we have purposely put, we have let others put the limits or we ourselves have put limits. And the Holy Spirit is giving you the grace to take the limits off. Okay.
take the limit card. And I'll sign books later tomorrow, I guess. But this is, my other, this is the bestseller, about more than a million now are out there. The, this is the hidden power of prayer and fasting. See, it's, even the Baptists are studying this. <laughs> and uh, there are several c- CDs. This is uh, two where I, the glory scriptures with music come for Many of the, the many kids and people healed of cancer come out of comas and uh, autistic. The head of a major ministry around Washington, D.C. Their child was autistic. And they said he was severely autistic. Had not spoken. He was five years old. So I remember praying for him and giving him this. This is all the healing scriptures with music. I said, play this over him at night for the next few nights. He woke up the next day, started speaking. And... uh, His name is Daniel. He has been, his mom brought him. This was a few years ago now. And then as the years passed, he said, every, he, still his mother wouldn't give up. She played this CD every night for the next several years. And she said, Mom, I want to meet the talking man. By this time, he was now re-diagnosed as a genius. Oh. And he is in one of the genius. So, there is a place where I, I have such a faith, almost every autistic child we pray for who is nonverbal starts speaking. Um, and uh, we have, well, we have everyone that we have had a chance to see. But anyway, so he said, I want to see the talking man, Mom. She called me the talking man. So the mom brought him from Washington to see me in Charlotte. So I took Daniel out to lunch. And Daniel wouldn't stop talking. (laughs) And I said, Daniel. You said, yes, sir. I said, shut up. (laughs) All right. Now, here's the other key for the, one of the, one of my great life scriptures is, Second uh, Corinthians three. It says, "Now the Lord is a spirit." Verse seventeen. Now the Lord is a spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Now the Lord is the spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord is, I have a profound statement to give you wherever you are there you is <laughs> now I want to take a few more minutes to talk about the isness of God where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty a jubilee yeah. that comes from the word jubilee the spirit of liberty, that's one of the jubilee words. That's the zone where debts are now. You become debt free. It's that place where amazing miracles happen, where oppressed children come back to serve, to restore to their families. And that's one of the things I feel like God wants to release tonight. Um, there are a couple of families here. You have a son or a daughter that's, um, they need to be set free from addiction. And they've been captured. Where, where are, who's son, daughter, Yeah, stand up for a moment, just now. I'm just going to send an angel 
right now. I felt like in the anointing. Is it a sun? Okay. I felt like in the, I wrote it down. I felt like I'd have, God gave me a vision for someone's son. And I'm, I'm praying that you will have a great Christmas by this time. The, I mean, in the next. And uh, someone, and the, the other family, and even if it's a daughter, it's okay. Whose is the daughter? That's, uh, uh, yeah. Well, we're going to agree together tonight that the spirit of glory is going to touch. Who has had trouble with the law? It may be it's, uh, the loved one is in prison. Where are you? There's one. Wave your hand. I, I felt, okay, there are two. How is that trying? More than one. Yeah. Well, the Lord wants to touch. I know that it's impacted you and you really, there are days that you have, it's been heavy. The Lord wants to take that. And I, I believe that there is deliverance in the glory. Okay. What's his name or her name? Christopher. Christopher. What's his name back there? Austin? Barton. Okay. What's his name? Okay. And just call out your, what, what's? James. James? Okay. Is he around this area still? Or you don't know? Yes, he's here. He's in this area. Okay. Well, it doesn't matter. There's no distance in the glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Is that a brother? So, who, who is that? Yours thing. Back there. Is that a son? Okay. What about you? A son and a daughter. Son and a daughter. Okay. See, this is, we're going to break this change in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. And the Lord said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me. One of the things is the anointing sets the captives free. All right. Thank you, Father. So the glory, it's not you agree and you stay in the glory. And that is, God's going to honor your intercessions, your prayers. Nothing is impossible. So some of these very people have a calling of God in their lives. And the enemy has tried to short circuit this. But these are some of the most kids who have the greatest potential. And we're going to fulfill the dream God has for them. Not with the enemy. And I want you to encourage you and encourage yourself. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Oh, yeah. All righty. Glory to God. Glory. Yes. Give the Lord a big clap. We praise you, Lord. We thank you. And you're going to get phone calls. You're going to, we're going to see this by the... And, and start getting... One of the things is when the Lord gives a word, get pregnant with that word. Yeah. Okay, so it's coming from the glory. Yeah. So you get pregnant. And then after a certain time, that pregnancy doesn't have to last nine months. It can be in a week. The manifestation comes. Okay, Lord, Say, Lord manifest it. Manifest is the other. I love to talk. I've got so much. Uh, I get the atmosphere of glory is so thick here. I'm getting see. Whoa. Awesome. I love it. I love this place. It's and nothing is impossible. See, it's um, that's why I often share testimonies of stories because stories are doorways of the glory. The testimonies are doorways. You go in and then there are through one door you will see a hundred doors that lead to a thousand doors. Okay, in the glory, it doesn't stop. Okay, now the Lord is a spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, there is healing. Some of you may have seen, it. it's on YouTube, that a few years ago, I was, we have a building now, but we met in a big tent, and the Lord gave me this, as it came in the glory, this word, See, the word of God is alive and active. The word is alive. Say alive. Alive. And active. active. And full of power. Full of power. So 
matter. The more you uh, receive it as it's, it is singing to you and hovering over you, and you exercise your faith to grab hold of it and say, it's not generic, general, it's for me. Yes. Say, it's for me. It's for me. And then you grab hold of it, and it becomes full of power. All right. Juice. And then I get juiced often. So, anyway. <laughs> so, this word came singing. It's the glory was singing. It came as a sing. It was glory singing to me. And so I started singing. Now the Lord is the Spirit. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is healing, healing, healing. Now the Lord is the Spirit. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is glory, glory, glory. And as I started singing it, a pillar of glory came into the center of the auditorium. And out of it, gold and feathers started falling. And you can see, I think it's on YouTube. Uh, and that is the large numbers of pastors all that year. They were in it. It's the, the cloudy pillar stayed with us for more than 30 minutes, almost 40 minutes. And you could, it was also on top of the tent. People went outside the tent and it was golden light swirling with gold stuff coming out of it and feathers. And believe me, we did not kill birds and put it in the air conditioning system. <laughs> But the Lord was activating, just kind of letting us see something often that we are not seeing, but we want to, we receive that it's the Lord is doing something awesome. So, but we all, then we finish the scripture, with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. So remember I said, we look at this, oh, I ask you again, what are you beholding? And as a family, what are you beholding? Often the enemy will do hand-to-hand -hand combat with you to drag down your vision and put you in a, a where you are seeing it at this level, yes. at the ground level, and God wants you right. to lift up your eyes and beholding yes. as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. Yes. You are being transformed. Your situation is being transformed. The, yeah, say transform, transformation. So that means it's being redefined. It doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, see, the, the glory is getting thick. I'm getting drunk here. You are being transformed. The word is, in the Greek, is metamorphosis. Say metamorphosis. metamorphosis. See, you learned a big word tonight. <laughs> it is an awesome word. You are being transformed. Your family is being transformed. Being around the glory. Beholding. What is the key? Beholding as in a mirror. Not the Lord. Only the glory of the Lord. You are being transformed. So the word metamorphosis, I remind you, some of you may have had this experience when you were a kid in school and you talk this caterpillar and put it in a little jar or something, put some green stuff in it and the, the caterpillar, this wormy little thing would creep and crawl and, do, and eat the leaves and all that after a few days comes and you thought it was dead. And uh, they said, don't worry. You put it out in the sun and a few days later, something sprouts out in it. You eventually realize those are little spindly things coming out are suddenly turn into wings. And this creepy, crawly, caterpillar thing turns into a beautiful, gorgeous butterfly and goes, flies forth 
It is the same crawly entity. And yet it has been transformed. And it has metamorphosed into a creature of another dimension. And is a creature of flight. Not crawling around. And that is what Jesus does. This is what the glory of the Lord does. So often we look at certain things that the challenges. I want to tell you and declare to you that many of the challenges that you are facing even today. God wants, he brought you to that place to have a destiny and a purpose in the living God. To behold the glory of the Lord in the midst of that and see it miraculously transformed from glory to glory. So he is transforming you. And as we behold, he is transforming your family. He's, you'll find often that the glory would come. It would not come singularly. When the glory came to visit the Philippian jailer, it was not just a jailer. It was his whole household that was transformed. When the glory came to a house of Cornelius in Act 10, that man who just believed in the living God, and by the way, so generously, he see that the, when the glory came, it was not just Cornelius. It was his whole household. In fact, it was not just his whole household. It was, you know, he, he was the first uh, European, in a sense. The Gentile world, the whole of Europe, began with Cornelius. And so it is not limited. Often we have limited the holy. That was one of the big sins of, well, not in a heavy word, but of limiting the Holy One of Israel. So we want to take the limits off around us. All the limits of the past that you have put on it. You want to break the, some of the chains that are around you yourself to believe in awesome things. Yeah. Yeah. So I, was, I remember um, the we have uh, well, several things the Lord brings to mind but um, I was in Toronto. Some of you may uh, know of uh, Pastor John Arnott, Toronto Airport Church. And, um, I've done several times gone and done conferences for them. So there was this one of the last times I've been there. Um, I prayed for about the whole about two, three thousand people. I, I was through. Now I finished my service. I was walking out. Um, but they always have some bodyguards around. And I reached the end of the auditorium. I was going to my hotel and I turned and I saw this woman. She was at the back of the auditorium. And I said, you. I made her stand up. I just said simply to her, I see you with a baby. Then walked away. Never met her, didn't know who she was. She was a wife of one of the staff members of the church, the Toronto Airport Church. And she and her hubby had married kind of later in life. and So they were in their late 30s. Or so, and they'd been married for 14 years. So they'd been trying to have a baby, but all the specialists said it's impossible. Sorry, can't. It won't happen. So she had just made up her mind. I'm going to just bless the kids and all that. I love kids, but I'll just bless. Um, and here is this interfering <laughs> man of God, whatever, and stirred her up. And she was kind of angry when I gave her that word. She said, "This doctor said it's impossible." No way, and all, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And nine months and two weeks later, she had a baby. I think 
You may have a picture of her, I think. They may. Did you put? Uh, anyway, that there is Lindley with that baby Jordan. Now, where did that come, baby come from, in a sense? I mean, it's the doctors, the best specialists said there's no way. And here is someone. I see you with the baby. That's all. Didn't lay hands on her. But the creative energy of the glory yes. went, and that baby's name is Jordan. It's cute. Babies that come from the glory are really awesome, cute. I think I came from the glory. <laughs> or, um, well, I want to start praying. Glory. See, you get, now we talk a little more about it, that you become congruent as you receive the word. You agree with the word. The word is alive and it becomes active. And the energy behind it is the presence, the Shekinah, of the glory of the Lord. And in Genesis 17, you find the Lord comes to Abram, Genesis 17. When Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and sent, said unto him, I am the Almighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect. I am the Almighty God, El Shaddai. I am your all sufficiency. You don't need anything else. You have me. I am. Say, I am. I am. And Jesus said, before Abraham was, what did he say? I am. I am. He said, also, I am the light of the world. I am resurrection and life. I am. I am. He's not, therefore. See, religiosity makes you study God as the one in history. But Jesus wants to come right now. And he and his servants will bring holy interruptions and his suddenlies because he has a different thing in mind. He has healing in his mind. He has restoration. Yes. He has restoration of families. Yes. Restoration of cities. Yes. Restoration of nations through the wonder of the Lamb of God. So as you become, see, I am, you become congruent with the I am that I am. My presence will go with you. You find Moses got to know I am. You remember the Ten Commandments, the movie? Very well done. Cecil be the middle. If, when I go to heaven and Moses does not look like Charlton Heston. I'm going to be disappointed. He cannot be short and fat. He has to be Charlton Heston. Otherwise, I'm going to say, you're not Moses. Ah, uh, Charlton Heston is Moses. But if you remember, as he goes and sees the burning bush, and God, he receives the commissioning, he says, who shall I say sent me? And the Lord introduces himself and says, tell them, I am that I am. Say, I am. I am. So he's not the great I'm going to be. He's not the great I was. He's the great I am. Say, I am. I am. So we receive his I amness. And you get into this bubble 
of the present. As you become one, uh, I've talked recently, I've talked about being in the bubble. I may talk some more about it tomorrow. But around you then, there is the presence of the glory. You beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. Around you is the presence of the Lord. And the more you stay in that, then your seeing changes. Your beholding changes. Um, I, I remember a little while back, I had I had commitment to go do a conference for Bill Johnson in Redding, California. Some of you know Bill. And uh, so then I did something. I, just like Bonnie, Bobby Connor, I'm a hunter. I'll have to tell you some hunting stories. Um, so I did, I hunted the deer and then I carried it bodily alone about 70 yards or so and I did something stupid to my back. So anyway, they had to do, go in there and do something. So any, uh, so they had to work, do some work on my back. So I couldn't, I knew I, the doctors would not allow me to fly. So I phoned Bill Johnson. I said, Bill, I'm sorry. I won't be able to make it to that conference, so I'm, if it's okay, I'm going to send Bonnie. And he said, we would love to have Bonnie. It's so great. <laughs> and I, I kind of got disappointed. <laughs> I said, Bill, you, you needed to spend five minutes lamenting that I couldn't come. That, it, it was almost insulting, the way you jumped on saying, I would love, anyway, I, I'm just kidding. But so Bonnie was, that weekend, she, she, she was in Redding, California. I was in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I was, uh, at the, we, we do all night prayer, have been doing it for 24 years. Yeah. Friday. So since I couldn't fly, but I, I was there at my all night prayer. And I had my legs stretched out and suddenly I, my phone rings and it's Bonnie from Redding, California. I said, what are you doing calling me? You're supposed to do a service for me in Reading. She said, that's where I am. There are 2,000 people expected to see you. Say hello to them. And she put me on the... <laughs> now, I said, okay, God bless you. I, and, I, and then I said to Bonnie, Bonnie, do you see that woman? In front of you on the left, she is wearing blue. And ask her, she, is, she owns horses. Now I'm sitting in Charlotte. <laughs> prayer meeting. She is in Reading. I'm not, it's just the phone. And I could see that woman. And I said, she has come here. Doctor has given her just a few days to live. She's got cancer. Terror, God's healing her of that cancer right now. And she owned horses and she got healed of terminal cancer. That's what I mean by being in that atmosphere of the glory. And then you're seeing, you start seeing in the glory. And in the glory, I could see that woman, even though I was in Charlotte, North Carolina. So, what I want to do tonight is to release that glory, special of presence where we are connected with the awesome, finished work of Jesus at Calvary.
you are in a zone we are going to take every limit off of God for you for your family and it's I describe it as the bubble of its presence and I'm praying a bubble of that presence over each of you and then as we corporately come together the bubble is like a giant bubble and amazing things in that territory then it's anointed of Jesus I am that I am is right there just like he was in whatever difficulty you have the Lord we have recently seen so many cancer healings and uh, I just want to release the glory over each and every family one I have this and I see that same arrow come. Uh, so this arrow last couple of weeks ago, the arrow of the Lord came over someone's heart, and you were there, Heather. And I said, right there, that I see the arrow come right there to heal your heart. And the man said, my heart. I came for healing for my heart, and my name is Aerosmith. <laughs> and a couple of you need miracle in your heart right now. Where are you? Just stand. Thank you, Father. Let, I see the arrow flying. I saw it here. Just, so let that come. Um, I would, um, I'll, I will speak out some of these things. For you, and as you do so, um, someone has a lawsuit. You're fighting some kind of lawsuit. Where are you? That I believe the Lord wants to give you a victory in this lawsuit. That's is that someone? Wave your hand quickly and claim it, because that's the. If it is any kind, whatever. Huh? Oh, good. But if it is there, let the rest grab it. It's any the word it is kind of released. Grab it. Say it's for me. It's for my son. It's for my daughter. Whatever it is, that's good. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I grab it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh yes. And uh, do we have a keyboard player? Or did we lose lose our keyboard guy? Oh, there you are. I didn't know it. I thought you had disappeared. But there you were. Awesome. You. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Remember that I am the God that healeth thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and heal your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. You are the God that healeth me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and healed my disease. I am the Lord, my healer. You are the Lord that healeth me. You are the Lord, my healer. 
sent your word and healed my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. And if someone's relative is on uh, dialysis or uh, uh, kidney disease, where are you? Someone's kidneys have been at is that? Who is it? Is it your nephew? Okay, what's his name? Billy. Thank you. Is there someone else? Raise your hand. Is that who is that for? Your what? Oh, grandma. Okay. I see kidneys being healed. There's someone who is here right now that your kidney needs. Is it like a creative miracle God wants to give? Is it for you? Okay. Thank you, Father. I just praise the Lord. Come off you guys there. Right sitting right there. Put your hands right where Heather put her your hand right where her kidney is. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Thank you. You needed a, a creative miracle, I believe. So that's we're gonna pray the fire of the Lord. Come and touch you. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes. Laura, where are you, Laura? Um, wave your hand. There's someone. Were you standing for healing right now? There's someone in your family getting a miracle. Thank you, Father. It may be you, right? So, do you need a healing? Huh? Yeah, just stand right now. Let the glory touch you. It's going through you. Hallelujah. And my brother here, what's your first name? Yeah? Tom. You're standing for healing yourself also? Yes. Well, what's that for? Your heart? Okay. Yeah. We, we have seen a lot. Of, don't stop taking the medication until the doctor says, you don't need it. Okay, but it's is there someone else that needs diabetes healed? Stand right now. Thank you, Father. It's, and we may need, I feel like a couple of times I'm going to pray for you guys right now. Thank you, Father. Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And there is someone's, uh, it's right there you are trying to handle dementia in your family. The, either he's a father, mother, who is it? The dementia? Yeah. Is that your mom? Okay. So it's a generational thing. Dementia also there? You. Okay. We, and I mean, I'm not trying to think. No, you can, I've seen several changes for dementia. Okay. It's almost like a spirit for me. I just... I have a great impatience with that thing that we got to battle as a body against this thing because we have the level of dementia that's attacked in this nation is much higher than a lot of situations. I don't know why, but we break the spirit. That's a... Hallelujah! Glory to God. Glory to God. And there is someone, either you or your son has PTSD. Where are you? You have had, you went through, and you you guys, is that PTSD? Yeah, I just got a very, I mean, living kind of from, it's like I see fireballs coming. And what's your son's name? Huh? Cain. All right. I'm, uh, all right, James. Thank you. Father, Lord, just heal the trauma in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. All right. And now, if you need something, just if you need, there is someone who was in a, in a wreck, a car wreck or something, and you're still dealing with the effect of it, you stand also. Is that you? Yeah. God's doing some. Hallelujah. And hearing loss, you stand up. Thank you, Father. 
that there are packages from the glory coming. Put your hand on your ears. Let the glory come in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Still see someone. I want some of you to go. Whenever we go, see if there is gold that you did not see in your teeth. That's the gold filling or gold, <laughs> gold crown. Father, more. Get into this bubble right now. Step into the glory by faith in the name of Jesus. I am the Lord that healeth thee. I am the Lord, your healer. I sent my word and heal your disease. I am the Lord, your healer. You're allowed to get drunk if you want while you're standing. Thank you, Father. You are the God that healeth me. You are the Lord, my healer. You sent your word and healed my disease. You are the Lord, my healer. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Now start as you feel something different. If your back is feeling better, wave your hand. If there's something that's changing, just wave your hand at me. If you feel, try to do something you couldn't do before. Thank you, Lord. Bend over. See if you can feel something better. Holly, wave your hand if you feel something is happening to you right now. Thank you, Father. All right. Amen. More, Lord. More, more, more. Praise you, Lord. Catherine. Where is Catherine? Catherine, you're getting the angels touching you right now. Thank you, Lord. Is that you, Catherine, back there? Kathy, that'll do. It's anywhere near where it's <laughs> I say if it's five miles within your zone, just get in the glory. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you. And I, I hear the song, Tammy, come home. Is there Tammy? Where's Tammy? Tammy, God's touching you right now. And your home in the name of Jesus. There is a particular, and now I think there is grace. It's like, I don't know where you're living at, but if you need a new house, there's the Lord. I feel faith is coming to claim your housing situation, that you're getting a breakthrough. In Jesus' name, debt free, I believe God's going to do something special. I'm claiming that. Take the limits off. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a clap. We praise you, Lord. You may be seated. Praise God. I'm, I'm, we're going to continue this healing service in different ways tomorrow. But uh, I want to lay hands on the people. How many of you would like to have an impartation or a laying on a fan? <laughs> I'm in trouble. <laughs> That's all right. Well, I have made the mistake of saying I was at Randy Clark's thing at us. I'll lay hands on those who remain behind or anyone who wants to. But 2,700 decided they would stay. I didn't go home until a hotel until three o'clock in the morning anyway but we're going to start uh, who are the ones who are going to organize this for me and Steve if you are able to have the energy you can kind of help for the other people do that and if you want to put a recording in how, how many appreciate Steve Steve will you? Steve, 
you have your CDs here, don't you? Yes. At the table, how many do you have? Uh, about uh, maybe. How many different kinds? Ten different titles. Huh? Ten different titles. Ten different. Wow! You, I got every one when Steve was with us two weeks ago. I told my assistant, get everyone. So make sure it is some of the most I'm some of the most anointed. And I said, I want to have Steve Swanson on my iPad. So you know, I was able to fit him into my iPad. So you can upload it. Buy the CDs and get them uploaded. It's awesome. Anyway, hallelujah. So I'm going to stay. I'm going to take the table up. Oh, you're going to. Am I going to go down? How are you? I'm going to say, okay, going down. Great. You may have to get my chair. <laughs> going to have a line? How are we going to do it? We're going to line up? Yeah, this way. Yeah. <laughs> I need, I thought, or you can do it this way, yeah. You guys come this way because I thought we were going to have helpers. You are 
upon the throne And unto you we lift our voice in praise To the Lamb upon the throne
release the fullness of your spirit. Shekinah glory come, Shekinah glory come, release the fullness of spirit. Shekinah glory come, Shekinah glory come.
If you're watching online, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, we're going to go off the air, but we'll be back tomorrow at 10 a.m. Love you. God bless you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Woo!